In this video, I'm going to go over the input function in MATLAB and also fprintf, which is a function in MATLAB used for displaying information. To get started, I'm going to use a code that I already wrote. So I'm going to use the edit function to open up that script file. And remember, this is one of the ways we talked about creating new script files. You can also use this for editing existing script files. So example code. And now I've opened up that script file. So before we talked about this process and the general layout of how to get started in writing a code. Now, most of the time in writing our code, our goal is to have some type of equation, some type of function, some type of model that we wanna be able to replicate multiple times. Now I can run this code and I could say, okay, let me change X to 10 and run this again to see what Y would be. This is one way you could run this code multiple times, but I can also create this code so I can keep changing that user, that input for X and make it a user input instead of just hard coding the information in. So these are all examples of hard coding and data. So instead, I'm going to use the input function and say, So here you will notice I'll have that purple text again. That means that is a character array. That's what my prompt will be to my user for that value for X. And then that way Y will keep changing. So I'm gonna run my code. The first thing that I see in my command window is it's asking what that value for X is. So the code is paused here until I put in a piece of information. So I'm gonna say seven, enter, and then the code will continue running. So now is the time when I might want to start adding in those semicolons to suppress different pieces of information. So maybe I don't want my user to see any of that process. All I care about is them being able to see the question, asking for a piece of information, and then the final piece of information of what Y is. So this works. My code works. I can use this. I can reuse this multiple times for different values for X. And then that way I don't have to keep recalculating and keep typing in the information. All I have to do is supply the information for X. And I could swap out the slope and the Y intercept at any time to use this for any line. Another piece of thing that I might want to change is right now it just says Y equals 30. Maybe instead of displaying Y as Y equals 30, I wanna have a message or some type of information with that. This is where I can use fprintf. So in the fprintf function, I'm going to have multiple input arguments. So I will have my text here and I will have the variable I want to display second. So within that text, I might say something like, and then this is the position where I would want to have that value for y. In order to put that there, I'm gonna to have to use what's called a placeholder. So percent %d is one type of placeholder. Um, this will display the information for y. So if I put five, it displays as 30, but this is not going to work for decimals. It does, but it's scientific notation and most people don't wanna say that. So we will use f. F is anytime you have a decimal or something that's a float, that's when you want to use that percent F placeholder. So let's run it again. And now we see the information here. So right now you see six decimal places. If you want to change that, you can add however many decimal places you want in between the percent and the F in that placeholder. So now I only see one decimal place. Or again, if I would have put a two here, I see two decimal places. And one thing you might not like about this formatting is the prompt to continue running code is immediately after that value. If I wanna drop down to the next line there, if I wanna add a, like an enter, I just do dash N for new line. And I can do multiples of those if I want, or just one. So here's what this would look like with one. And again, I can go in and change this to be however many decimals. And now my information is going to be displaying and I can keep changing that user input. So X would be my user input, Y would be my output, 
and I can use this code as many times as I want to keep using for that same line. I could make my slope a user input as well. So if I wanted to go ahead and copy this, paste it here, I can put that there and run my code again. So now it's prompting for X and it's prompting for the slope. This could get annoying if I had the same slope for every line. I might not want that to be a user input. I might want to, again, just leave it hard coded how it was at whatever my slope is. And the same thing goes for the Y intercept. So if you're working with the same line, this would be an example where I only want one user input. If it's going to be continuously changing lines, then I might want to have three different user inputs. So a lot of times you're gonna to have to think about your code and what's the context, what's the use, why did you generate this code and how will you be using it? But the main thing I want you to take away from this video is this input function enables you to have that user input that we were seeing in the command window and fprintf allows you to communicate your outputs, your information to your user. And there's a lot of different ways that I can use this fprintf. I can display multiple pieces of information. I can display a single piece of information. Um, I can just put text. So I could say something at the beginning, like, a little welcome message. So then we see that at the beginning, welcome to my code. And then it's, what is the value for X? If you are gonna put that text, you might wanna say something a little bit more useful, like tell them what the code does. Um, you can use this for straight lines, like how to use the code. Again, this is more about the interface and communicating different information to your user. If it's just for you, more likely you'll be sticking to the input function and maybe some fprintf throughout. 